it might be free, but that doesn't always mean it's worth your time, unless it like really, really is. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 best and worst free PSN Plus games on PS4. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 5 Worst, Aru's Awakening. Platformers are often defined by their unique spins on movement. Mario jumps, Sonic speeds, and Aru teleports. Unfortunately, that mechanic will either make or break your game, and in the case of this hand-drawn title, it definitely broke it. Players can freely aim where they want to teleport, but it's easier said than done since the analog sticks don't quite give you the precision of a keyboard and mouse. Players end up fighting against the controls instead of mastering them, and since the levels and bosses are designed around this one core concept with limited checkpoints, they often feel unfair, not challenging. Number 5. Best, The Binding of Isaac, Rebirth I can see forever. The remake to the originally disturbing title blends familiar gameplay into a new package that runs and looks better, while featuring hundreds of new items to play around with on your quest to kill your mom. Discovering what each of them does requires some trial and error, but skilled players can still adapt to the items they've been given and work out powerful combinations to carry them through difficult stages. The bullet hell inspired battles and boss fights means getting there is never easy though, but it's just addicting enough to have you load up into another run after you die. <laughs> Number 4 Worst, Dragon Fin Soup <laughs> At this point, gamers almost expect Kickstarter-backed titles to kinda flop, and unfortunately, Dragon Fin Soup just reinforces that stereotype. On paper, the top-down RPG seems like it can't miss, since it features popular tropes like procedural generation and SNES-inspired artwork. However, in practice it fails, because everything under the hood is astonishingly broken. From the boring pseudo-turn-based battle systems to the confusing counterintuitive interfaces, the game seems to kind of want to break your immersion and enjoyment with frustrating design decisions every time you interact with basically anything. Number 4 Best Journey Too many gamers put off playing this masterpiece because its biggest selling point isn't on complex stories or in-depth gameplay systems, but instead on the emotions it invokes in the players when they sit down to experience it. On your journey, you will run into other players who can help you along before going on their separate paths, but everything in the game from the minimalist UI, the controls, and the excellent soundtrack all reinforce the feelings of isolation and an appreciation for the game's gorgeous environments. It feels like a real adventure, and though there's not much replayability once you reach the mountain in the distance, you'll only need to play through it once to remember it forever. Number 3 Worst Hardware Rivals Vehicular combat games need three things to function as a concept, awesome cars, varied playlists, and powerful weapons. With only four vehicle types and main game modes, Hardware Rivals dropped the ball on the first two, leaving its fate in the title at the hands of its weapons. Unsurprisingly, they suck too. The basic firearms feel weak and unsatisfying, while the map-specific special weapons, like the airstrikes, are so overpowered that each match devolves into a race to see who can use them first. You're better off just sticking to an old copy of Twisted Metal. Number 3 Best Bloodborne Dark Souls is a classic series, but the slow, methodical combat doesn't always mesh with everyone. From Software's PlayStation exclusive title looked to change all of that by keeping the bleak environmental storytelling while tweaking the combat to be more dynamic and fluid than ever. Relying on the one shield they give you will quickly lead you to being overwhelmed by enemies. So, the emphasis is on striking hard and fast, and rallying to heal rather than hiding to spam blood vials. You'll still die a whole bunch until you learn how to be proactive in battle, but when you finally land the killing blow on one of the many terrifying enemies in Bloodborne, you'll be happy you stuck with it.
Number two worst, Kung Fu Panda, Showdown of Legendary Legends. Trying to lure in fans of Super Smash Bros. by offering one of the only platform fighters available on a non-Nintendo system, Little Orbit delivered an incomplete title that exploits the film franchise and doesn't accomplish much else. The roster does an okay job covering the different films, but everything else is just way too light on content. There's only 12 stages, and the single player is a pathetically shallow ladder tournament that has you fighting just 10 random opponents in a row. Toss in some dead online multiplayer, and you have a game that doesn't offer much value. Number two best, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. The beauty of a Kojima-directed game is that players never really know what to expect, or think after they've played it. While we knew that stealth-based action and crazy plot twists would return to the series, attempts to bring the franchise up to date with higher production values, more open environments, and some quality of life improvements to the gameplay were nice surprises that helped breathe new life into the established formula. Diehards might not appreciate mechanics like reflex mode, but it's great for newcomers of the series to hone their sneaking skills and help deal with some unpredictable enemies. It may not have lived up to all of its hype pre-launch, but it's definitely worth your time. Number one worst, drawn to death. At its heart, this title tries to bring enough attitude and edge to make even the 90s blush through its use of offensive memes. But all of that talk is worthless when you can't walk the walk. Certain weapons like the Lucky Bastard are fun to use and have cool designs, but for the most part they're uninspired and take forever to put people down. The High Time to Kill is supposed to create tense fights, but they actually just drag on far too long and quickly become nauseating with all the graphical effects that litter the screen. Number 1 Best – Rocket League The concept behind this rocket-powered vehicular soccer game is simple – score a goal. The execution is a bit more complicated. Cars can jump and double jump, boost, fly, and kill each other, all to put the ball in the net. And these varied movement options result in spectacular displays of skill by the top players who can juggle, pass, and volley their way to the highlight reels. It will take you literally hundreds of hours to get decent, but with hundreds of cosmetics and varied game modes like solos, duos, basketball, and drop shop, it really never gets old. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.